Hello community! Today we're gonna do some visualization as you can see here and the topic will be how can we go from 34,880 dimension to 2 dimension in our data set and have the content still available in our tensor. So we will plot this so that you can see how beautiful it is to work with those data. And as you can see, we have here bouquet. And what I want to show you is we have about 20,000 objects, text objects. And they are from a database where there are about 20 structured clusters. So you can see this region here is about religion. This region here is about altruism. This region here, where was it, is about politics and guns and here we have miscangelous politics whatsoever and then we have a dense area here where we have windows x and electronics and graphics and ibm pc hardware and we want to do here something to be able to work with a high dimensional representation Remember when we did S bird, we embedded each sentence in a 706 dimensional vector space. And now I'm gonna show you how to reduce those dimension to a visualization in two dimension. Or I have my older videos, more than one years old. I went to three dimension, interactive in three dimension. And I hope, hope to leave you the thumbnail of video very long ago and the video very very long ago here and this video so you can go back and see the code in action for 3d but let's start today easy introduction to umap with a two-dimensional reduction and of course since we're here in a jupyter notebook we do it here in colab so we have documents and we have simple a label with 20 news group You've seen it, Macintosh, politics, gun, religion, whatever. And we want to reduce it in a classical UMAP dimensionality reduction. So we set up, we check the Python version. And then we say, okay, I need some dependencies. I need NumPy, SciPy, my Pandas, my Scikit-Learn, my data shader, my number. Yes, beautiful. And yes, everything is here. And then it will not work if you look at the documentation because we have to, just a very short uh, alteration, we have to upgrade a Python library called Gem. And after we did the upgrade, we can now say pip install umap learn. And we have the plot functionality also included in our install because we want to have this beautiful two dimensional embeddings. So, oh, and here we go with the code. We import our pandas, we import now our umap, we have our feature extraction, our account vectorizer, our TF IDF vectorizer, you know we import uh, bouquet to plot, and then we just fetch our data. And this is easy, this is provided for us. We just say, okay, fetch the news group, show me the data set that we have, show me the number of documents, Oops, hey, it's already there, come on. So my data set looks very easy. This is just an email. As you can see some data with something and then you have some text to the data. And then you have another email with this text and then you have another email. And this is classified according to 20 news group. So if you look at this, you see we have 18,000 documents and those 18,846 documents are classified by humans belonging to 20 categories, to 20 labels. Ah, you say, I, I see where it wants to go. It is easy. Yes, of course it is easy. And just this is the label that we have. Graphics, Windows, IBM PC, Auto, Sport, Electronic, Space, Politics. Great. These are our 20 groups. In one, what we want to see is, oh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, look at the sample. Yeah, you can look at the document, but you know what it is. 
we want to go and construct some panda data frame. Yes, we want to know. These are our categories. So, okay, we say 20. Oops, these are our 20 categories and our 18,000 paragraphs, text documents. And we have eight, uh, 20 categories. So great. So what we do, we have for us to create a high dimensional representation. So the simplest thing, you know this from word to vec, is a bag of word approach. So what it does, it say, okay, one row will be a document, a post, whatever is in the paragraph. So one of my 18,000 documents will be in a row. And each column of this row will correspond to a particular word. So you say, okay, I have my 18,000 rows, and then how many words are there in all of those 18,000 documents? Let's say 40,000, 35,000 words. So we have 35,000 columns. And the values in those columns will be the counts. How many times a given word appears in a particular document? So if your column number 10,000 is the word happiness, and in the document, in this one row, where you have happiness two times mentioned, you will have the count of two in the column happiness. Great. So we know there's the count vector as a function to do this. So we split our text into our tokens. We go the very easy way we do words. Then we remove the typical English stop words, Z and etc. And then we remove all words occurred in less than five times. Well, easy done. You know all of this. But the beauty, what we'll get out of this is a, a matrix. And this matrix has a high dimensional structure. Look at this. You know a three times three matrix, but here we have now for our 18,000 documents, we have 18,000 rows. And then for our columns, we have 35,000 columns, each column for a particular word. Great. So we have these, of course, unique tokens. So you can say this is our matrix structure we want to reduce. You know me, I want to see my data set. So I say, what is it? Ah, it's a sparse matrix, 18,000 times 35K. Great. And can I have can I have a view at this? And so I take the first, and you see here, I have now here the first uh, row, if you want, is one times 35K. And then in those 35,000 columns, we have just 72 words, of course, from the first uh, post, from the first paragraph. So we had a lot of zeros in this. So just 72 columns of our 35K columns will have something different from zero. Second, God will have only 30, uh, 33 stored element in our compressed sparse row format is a specific row format. And if you say, hey, are you sure that it is almost nothing? Yes. I do just a reshape and I do a to list conversion and I can show you, look here, where, where we go, just where we go. This is now our 35K of the first paragraph. This, this, this are our zeros. And somewhere in those zeros, we have then some numbers on particular columns. But okay, this is it. And now, now finally we are at the task. Our task is reduce this tensor, this matrix, from 18,000 times 35K to 18,000 times two. But the content must be there. Do not lose any information. Or if you lose information, try to minimize it under any circumstances. Now, UMAP. UMAP is a mathematical beauty. And if you study uh, mathematics at the university, it, in my case, it was in the sixth semester that we started with topology. And even if you study this in university, it takes a little bit of thinking to really understand this. So to make it very easy, I show you the basic concept. 
we have a, here under A, a high dimensional space. Oh, let's do this. And we have, let's say, we just did some sentence transformer and we took one dot is one sentence. And we said, we do a sentence embedding of the semantic meaning of sentence one, and we construct an embedding in a vector space. And let's say that this dot here is our embedding in the vector space. Our sentence two is here, our sentence three is here, and then you have, I don't know, 12 sentences. So let's think this is the semantic embedding of our sentences by expert in, uh, and now this is, in our case, a 35,000 dimensional vector space. How can we go to two dimension without losing the topological refinement of this data set? Now, the idea of UMAP is to compute a graph of the data set. And you might say, well, why should I compute a graph? Well, the reason is in topology, in topology, in mathematics, it's a little bit too complicated, but maybe I'll leave you a link afterwards. So you construct from your point cloud, from your vectors in a high dimensional vector space, you construct a graph in a high dimensional vector space. And then the next step B is to learn an embedding to a low dimensional representational space. This is here, a load of the two dimensional, one, two, two dimensional, where we still have the information, the structure of the graph is more or less topological preserved. So you can see here the dots in orange, they have a particular tetraeda form. Now also here the dots in two dimension. Now this is in 35,000 dimension. This is in two dimension. You still have this kind of tetraeda form here in two dimension. So the, if you want a topological vicinity, the distance is somehow conserved. And there's some beautiful mathematics behind this. But this is a little bit out of scope for our video today. Just understand we have a vector. We have a high dimensional data set. We convert it in a graph, in a high dimensional vac, in a high dimensional space, and then we find an embedding that preserves the structure of this graph from 35,000 dimension now in two dimension or the three dimension or ten dimension. So you have a huge step of the dimensionality reduction. And UMAP is exactly this tool that we need for the dimensionality reduction algorithm. And since this is the introduction, you guessed it, A and B is what we do today, and C will be the next video. So here we go. At first, we have to reduce the dimension. Easy. We have to, uh, Hellinger distance that measures the similarity between two probability distributions. We have a multinomial distribution, and we just apply UMAP. Forget everything else. Just say UMAP.UMAP. You want to have a two-dimensional space, you have to define the metric of this space, and then you just train it, you fit it on your particular word doc matrix. This was exactly, as you can see here, 18,846 times 34,880. This is our matrix that we want to reduce to a two-dimensional matrix. And we say go. And the beauty is that this Python library does it for you. There are fine-tuning parameters I do not show you here, but this is just an overview. In the next video, we will go about hyperparameters. But just for the moment, this is it. Easy, simple, beautiful. We reduce now from 35k to 2. Now that we have this embedding, you can have a look. I have from my test run, I have here the output. Come on! Hide yourself. It should be a surprise that the shape is indeed what I told you it is going to be. So, come on, takes a little bit of time. I will be back in a second when the computation is finished. And great, we are back. It took us one minute and 21 seconds. And now we have an embedding of exactly what I told you that we want. We reduced it to a two-dimensional representational space. 
And now, in two dimension, you say, hey, of course, we can use Poké to plot it in two dimension. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We will take our embedding here and we will plot it. And here we go, here we go, here we go. So let's have a look. As you can see, um, it's color coded. So we have here the group, as you can see, the dots are so big. We have one, two, three, four, five, six dots, six sentences, if you want, all now belonging to religion. And we have here all belonging to science, cryptology, and there we have something belonging only to space. So you see, we identified now uh, really the dimensionality reduction, and we still have the cluster up and working for us. Of course, you can see here, let's go here, and right in the middle of the chaos, we have IBM PC hardware, Microsoft Windows, and whatever. So here we do have a little bit of an overlap, but you know what will be the solution. You know it because what we're going to do, we do a TF-IDF. You know this means term frequency, inverse document frequency. It's just two lines of code. We optimize it a little bit that we get the most important words. We get now also an 18,846 times 34,880 sparse matrix of almost everything zero. Exact, exact our little words, word back methodology. And then we do exactly the same. We say, no, I do not want that you see this here. Come on, yeah, this we will calculate now. Yeah, so yeah, again, this here, this will be a surprise. And now we do the same, we calculate the UMAP dimensionality reduction. Now, not on our pure word document matrix, but with our optimized for term frequency. We do this and we get another 1 minute 30 and I will show you, we will plot it and I will be back with you in a second. And here we go, it took us again 1 minute and 12 seconds and here we have now the visual representation. Maybe we increase it a little bit. And as you see, the result looks familiar but we have a little bit better performance right in the core of our data set. If we look here, we have again our, our cluster clearly identified. Oops, yes. Uh, just hold on. Your guns and everything in the Mideast. And here we are cryptology. Oh, wow. Yeah. Where's my overlap? Where's my overlap? Yes, here. Everything here is focused and belongs to one label, to one group. Everything here is space. And you can see almost here, Windows now. And here is a little bit of a mix-up still, but without any hyperparameters, without any fine-tuning. You see UMAP is gorgeous doing this dimensionality reduction from such a high dimensional, oops, back to space from 35K dimension to two dimension. And we still have the information provided for us in this low dimensional vector space. And we're going to work with this in the next video. I will show you that, of course, we can now improve our UMAP uh, library, the algorithm. And I think the next step will be a parameter, parametric UMAP system. But this will be a little bit more complicated because we will build a neural network inside of UMAP. But this I will show you in the next video. I say thank you and I hope I see you in the next one.